the giant rock bands of the early 70s, the Pink Floyds and the Who's and the Jethro Tulls and the Led Zeppelins, that, that they were unique. And, 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 I, and I always tell people that, that when, when these, the guys in these bands played music from maybe when they're 14, 15, 16, and the progress was incredibly slow, you know, you sort of learnt, you, you worked together as a band, that, that there was no instant success, so you, you really matured very, very slowly. It's like sort of slow cooking something, and at the end you got something really solid. You chuck something into a frying pan, it's sort of disposable, you sort of get there too quickly. Uh, I, I just think that they, they had such a, a, a good groundwork in working together as a band, you know, you literally shoved in the back of a van, sleeping on floors, that, that sort of background. I'm, I'm sure bands do it now, but um, in the late 60s, it probably took you three, four years of, of doing gigs before you, you would make a record. And, and nowadays, it, it's too quick, it's too easy. A bunch of guys get together, get a record contract, make a record, and, and then they're like, whoa, you know, what do we do now? It, it, it's too quick to, to develop naturally. So the, the, I, th I think the way, the, the way that bands really project themselves now is, is to have qu a quick success, a quick turnover, and then... Does the fame matter more than the artistry now, do you think? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I mean, uh, particularly in pop music. But I, I, yeah, I just think in it's, it's too easy. It's not too easy. It's very, very easy to become a musician. It's very, very easy to be a good musician. But you know, there, there, there's other things about being a professional musician other than learning the notes and looking good and having the right clothes. It's it's a sort of r real yeah, strong foundation in 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 the early. The beginnings of music you've got to learn about the blues the grassroots and if you just skip over that and go straight to sort of you know the, the top you just want to be at the top level you, you've just missed so much out it, it's a different world you know it's a world of, of instant access um, bands become famous in a different way on the internet it, it, it's 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 a very different thing you, you could virtually be a band that never plays live and have success uh, whereas in the early classic rock bands, it was gigs, gigs, hundreds, hundreds and thousands of gigs over the years. And, and each time you got a little bit better, you learnt a little bit more. Uh, it, it's, it's a huge investment in time. You were originally an architect student. Yeah. Um, what, why did you make that switch from architecture into music? Uh, I, I didn't really make the switch because I, I was a musician at school and uh, I was in school bands and, and then while I was training as an architect I, I, I worked and played in a band and, and there were so many possibilities to play live in, in England in those days in the, in the mid 60s that I was working nearly every night so my studies sort of uh, didn't fare well because I, I was up till like one, two in the morning most nights playing. Um, it, I, I didn't want to be an architect. I, I was sort of uh, sectioned into it because, of the, you know, there were so few alternatives that, that were any way a tiny bit interesting. And architecture in the 60s was really, really boring. Uh, it, it didn't have that sort of artistic edge to it that it does now and there was no romance to it you're building square <laughs> oblong blocks of steel and brick um, so it, it was an easy thing to leave I, I, I never really liked it it was just a means to an end so sure. as soon as I had the opportunity to play music uh, it, uh, I, I just grabbed it in the same way that uh, um, you know, an 18 year old kid might think you know, I'm not going to go to university or college now. I'm going to go around the world for two years. I'm going to work my way around. I'm going to. I just want to have a life outside of these lifelong commitments. So it, it was something I did for fun. I didn't seriously think I could make a living as a musician. Well, you followed your passion. That was the most important thing. Uh, yeah, it was. I, 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 I followed what would become a passion because it, in the early days. It was still a hobby and it was fun. The Marquee Club, and, and, and I always went to the one in Water Street, that, that was sort of a, in my 
when I moved to London that's where it was um, it was just the place to see the best bands in, in the UK uh, that, that's where you went to see new bands see great bands great music which bands in particular? Uh, it was a band that played a lot there called The Herd so the, in the marquee days the, there were The Herd played neat. I think they had a residency there. they played there every week and Peter Frampton was the sort of the, the new guy the new whiz kid in town and, and even then he was a, a, a really good guitar player all the people that performed there were all the uh, people who would later become part of the great bands Led Zeppelin, Pink, Floyd, The Who you know, whether, whether it was that band or bands before them they were performing at the Marquee and all the musicians in London went to the Marquee to check everybody out it was a, it was a, a really important place to be it, it, you could never repeat that, that sort of a uh, an environment because it, it, it was just all about great music. And what type of music was it? Specifically blues-based music? Or? Uh, it was anything really. It was a, a, a lot, a lot of blues, more blues than anything. Spooky Tooth used to play there all the time. Traffic. It, it was what would become classic rock. Um, but you know, people when when there's a, a time in music when it's exciting and people are very receptive to what's going on you don't put a, a title to it it's just you know, that, that comes a lot it's later music, yeah. it's good music and, and nobody cares whether it's the blues, rock and roll um, weird stuff you know, it's just some, you know, Family were another band crazy music but, but it was so, it was cutting edge and, and that's all that mattered you, you went there to see something that you might think was the best thing you've ever heard. The British invasion to America, although I, I hate that expression, was, was uh, essentially British musicians uh, soaking in a huge amount of information from American music and repackaging it and bring it, bringing it back to the States. I mean, not admitting it was from America, but that, that, that's what we did. We had no other music to listen to other than American music, so essentially uh, we, we didn't want to copy it. We just soaked in the information and it came out in our music writing. Well, certainly in from the mid-60s when English musicians were developing and sort of learning how to play and, and, and beginning to form bands in England, that, that they were digesting information from the States uh, uh, there was very little music in England that would inspire rock music but then from America Eddie Cochran, Bill Haley, Elvis Presley but, but so much music from the States was the sort of foundation of, of the English rock band and, and, and how they started. Carnaby Street essentially was part of a, 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 the, the London scene but more in, in a, a, a very general fashion where everybody went there it, it, it wasn't particularly uh, connected to music or musicians in fact more musicians went to Notting Hill uh, you know to the um, to the fair Notting Hill market uh, which was held every Saturday and that's where most musicians bought their clothes but Carnaby Street w w was sort of more pop than rock it, it, it was a uh, sort of the Britney Spears of London if you like hmm. But pop back in the 60s had a different connotation than today, am I mistaken? Uh, I, yeah, pop in the 60s uh, covered a, a, a big area because uh, uh, in the late 60s, bands like uh, John Mayle, Cream, Hendrix, Jethro Tull, Pink Floyd were appearing on the pop programs on television and, and, and they were getting hits in the top 20. So that there was a real mixture of of uh, styles and popularity, and it's because all these English bands were becoming so popular in England that they people were buying their records and buying singles as well. So they they, they sort of became part of the pop culture, but they were very, I think, essentially we were distanced from pop music because we just thought it was something a bit silly and we did it for fun mm -hmm. and the serious stuff happened when we went on tour and uh, came over to the States. If you want to know what Skiffle is, listen to Lonnie Donegan. Skiffle bands had, um, might have a banjo, they'd, ha they'd have a tea chest bass which is a big wooden box with a pole, a broom handle, a piece of string 
and they tightened it and loosened it. They didn't really create notes, just more of a sound. A mixture of sort of country and uh, mountain music. But it became rock and roll. It was the sort of roots of rock and roll in England. It's like hillbilly music, really. Like the British version of hillbilly music, kind of? Yeah, I think so. Jethro Tull didn't play at Woodstock because they stopped people coming into the festival uh, but when it got such a disaster of mud and that the whole system broke down that there was no transport nothing was moving and we were about to go we were, we were you know like the day before we were ready to jump on a plane and go and play at Woodstock and that day they said we we can't have anybody else there but it, it's it's uh, completely Is that full eh wow it was just gridlocked, you yeah. know, that, that there was, it, had, it was a mud bath. To me, progressive rock uh, means that you can, that you're in a position to experiment uh, and people under that banner of progressive music are prepared to listen to you. Did it evolve directly from psychedelic? Uh, you, uh, psychedelic music w was such an animal of the, s the 60s really I, I, I don't see the continuity in it because it was psychedelic music and then there was heavy rock uh, um, punk uh, all those other things happened in between um, I, I can see the similarities but, but, I, but progressive music it's, it's an adjective and to me the adjective means that uh, what, what have you got I'm happy to listen to it. Uh, if you've got something really weird and different, then then I'm, I'm happy to listen and, and I might like it.